EasyFlow 120 Resin Head Mold. Today we're going to show how to make a mold for casting silicone heads using EasyFlow 120 Resin and the shim method for creating a dividing wall. Now the shim method in some cases is preferable to a clay dam just because it allows your uh, mold to be made both halves at the same time. Now to begin we'll need our clay pattern to mold and for this particular mold we're going to make a severed head of Patrick and first we'll have to cut off the Patrick head off of the shoulders there of Patrick's life cast and we're going to do a little bit of touch-up work and prepare it for our molding process. Now for the shim method the way we establish a parting line is by cutting up thin pieces of sheet metal and this is some flashing that you can pick up at any hardware store that we're just going to cut into little rectangle pieces. Now to make your parting line as clean as possible you want to choose a material that's thin and strong. Now you'll notice to create keys for this type of mold we crimp our flashing in these little triangular shaped keys and that'll come in play later on in the video but notice how we crimp that and press that into the clay and you want to be as precise as possible you don't want to wiggle that around too much because that will ultimately become your seam so you want to press those straight into the clay and leave as little deformation on the surface as possible now you'll notice as Patrick's building up that shim wall there's some gaps and what we're going to do is once we've got all of our metal shims in place we're going to close those gaps by using some packing tape folded in half over those gaps and that gives us a nice clean wall that's continuous throughout the entire sculpture. Now the main advantage to this type of mold making technique is speed. This allows us to build up the mold both sides at the same time. Typically for a two-piece mold you establish your parting line with a bed of clay and once you build one side of the mold you flip it over tear off the clay and put the other side of the mold on. This approach allows us to build both sides of the mold at the same time. And now that we're done with our parting line, we're ready to do any final touch-up work before we start our mold. Now we'll be using EasyFlow 120 casting resin to make our mold today. So since EasyFlow 120 is very adhesive, we want to take extra care to release the board and the sculpture. And you'll notice that uh, we're applying Johnson's Paste Wax to our board to keep the resin from sticking and then we're also going to follow that up with some spray release. We're using the Paulie's 2300 release both on the parting line and the clay piece as well. Now a quick word about where we put that parting line. You'll notice that the parting line for the most part falls the halfway point across the top of the head but we also put the parting line about an inch or so behind the ears and the reason we did that is later on since we're going to be making silicone prop heads we don't want that seam getting in the way of the ear and uh, we want to have nice clean ears on our final piece. Now the final step before we begin our mold is to apply some baby powder all over the sculpture and what that will do is that layer of baby powder helps draw the resin into all of the fine detail on the surface of our piece. And now we're ready to begin our mold. And again, we're using EasyFlow 120 casting resin and polyfiber thickener. Now, EasyFlow 120 is a fairly adhesive resin, so it's a good idea to take the extra precaution of wearing some gloves anytime you're working with adhesive materials like polyurethane resins. And always use accurate mixing containers. Here you'll notice we're using a calibrated graduated mixing container and all of the EasyFlow series resins are mixed one to one by volume. And here we're mixing up about 12 ounces, 6 ounces of part A and 6 ounces of part B. And this is what we call typically with a rubber mold we would call this our print coat. And it's going to serve the same function here. We want just a thin syrupy liquid that we can brush all over the surface of the piece to grab the surface detail. And we really want to, to put this on in one continuous layer. We want to avoid any breaks in this layer that could create lines in our finished piece later on. So you want to move fast and deliberately and get the entire surface of the piece coated. And if you need to, work in small batches, one for the front and one for the back. Here I'm being fairly ambitious and doing both the front and the back with a single layer. Now EasyFlow 120 is a fast setting resin. It kicks off in about two and a half minutes, so you got to work fast. If you want a slower setting resin for this process, I would recommend the 1512X 
or the 1511. Those are a 5 minute and a 10 minute working time resin system. Now for this project we wanted to move pretty quick and as you can see that layer is already kicking over so ready to mix up our second batch. Now from this point on we want to thicken our resin to a paste consistency and that way we don't have any drips or runs. We just need to add strength now to our print coat and what we're going for is a, an overall layer of about 3 8 to a half inch layer of resin all over our piece including the parting line or the shim. Now to thicken up Easy Flow 120 resin, we want to first mix our parts A and B a little bit, and then we're going to add some of the polyfiber thickener. And polyfiber thickener is a great thickening agent because it's an inert microfiber. So you stir in as much as you need to get whatever thickening effect you want. So the more you add, the thicker it becomes. And I usually add it just a handful at a time, depending on how thick I want the resin to be. And in this case, we want it to be fairly thick. We want it to, to still flow a little bit because we need to fill the ears and some of the undercut areas. But we want this to be a thick enough paste that will stay on a vertical surface. Now again, because this is a fast setting resin, we want to move quick and immediately start applying this to our piece. Now you'll notice with this batch, I have an extra set of hands. You'll notice Patrick is applying it to the back of the head as I'm applying it to the front of the head. And the reason for that is because we're using such a fast setting resin, uh, we want to make the best use of our time possible. You'll notice that uh, the batch I'm applying to the face is already kicking off a little bit, starting to get a little stringy. And as soon as it hits that st stage, you want to back off and let it cure and once it's turned that solid white, you're ready to move on to your next layer. Now, what we're going for here is an overall thickness of about 3 8 of an inch to about a half an inch overall thickness. And that'll give us a good strong mold that'll work well in production. Uh, we don't want it to be too thin and crack, but we also don't need it to be too thick and waste valuable resin. So when we start to get uh, to an inch thick, that's really wasted resin on a mold like this. Now we built up this particular mold in about four layers of resin. Uh, one thin print coat that we applied to capture the surface detail, and three thickened layers built up to create the overall thickness of our mold. And you don't want to get so much caught up on how many layers as much as what the overall final thickness is. If you can make a half inch mold with two layers, then so be it. But one of the reasons for several successive layers building this up is to minimize the chance for air entrapment. By putting that first layer on super runny, that makes sure that our surface coat is bubble free. Now to give you an idea how this uh, shim process works in cross section, Here's a side view of our clay sculpture with a shim in place. And what we do is we build up the resin on both sides at the same time. And we want to build that up to roughly about a half inch or three eighths of an inch of resin thickness. And Easy Flow 120 is a fairly strong resin. So using that uh, in about a half inch thickness tops gives us a good strong mold. Now once we're ready to open up the mold, what we have to do is go back with a plaster rasp and pull away the resin on top of that seam and expose our shims. And once we expose those shims, the mold actually opens up fairly easily. The main thing is we want to remove any edge that might be sharp or might cut you later on when you're handling the mold, and a wood rasp works great for that. Now that we've cleaned up the edge, we're ready to carefully pry open our mold. And you'll notice there it's opening right up. Just as soon as I tap on it, it's opening right up. And I'm going to go at it from both the bottom and the top just to make sure we don't crack the mold by putting too much pressure on one part at one time. Even though this is a fast curing resin, it's still a good idea to allow your mold to sit for a few hours before you demold your part because the resin puts off a lot of heat or exotherm and that can melt the clay and almost liquefy it on the surface at its hottest point. So it's a good idea to let it cool back down and then it's much easier to remove your clay pattern from the inside of your mold. Now it's pretty typical to lose the ears in a mold like this. 
So you want to go back in with a dental tool or a wood sculpting tool and very carefully pick out the clay in the ears. And you want to take extra care when you're doing this not to scratch the inside surface of the mold uh, because those scratches will obviously show up later in your silicone casting. And any residual clay you want to remove using naphtha or lighter fluid. What I do is just put a little bit of naphtha into a mixing cup and then use a throwaway brush to scrub the inside surface of the mold and that will break down any remaining clay residue and actually break it down into a liquid that can be wiped out of the mold. Now since we'll be casting platinum silicone into our finished mold, it's always a good idea whenever you're working on a project like this to avoid any clays that contain sulfur like Roma Plastilina or Jolly King Sculpting Clay. So I always recommend either using Monster Clay or Chavant NSP. And that eliminates any risk of transferring uh, sulfur from the clay into the surface of the mold. And now we have our finished two-piece resin mold ready for casting. And this type of mold is ideal for uh, platinum silicone casting and requires a minimal amount of release since we're working with a urethane resin that will naturally repel platinum silicone. All we need is a light spray of release and we're ready for casting. So stay tuned for part two where we make a gel 25 casting into our mold. And of course you can find all the supplies you need to make a mold like this, the Easy Flow 120 resin, as well as the polyfiber thickener, on our web store at brickintheyard.com.